Hey everybody, NFI Hammer here, and I'm going to be painting my very first ever Warhammer Underworlds miniature, the Skinnikin Khan Skier. I think this may be the ugliest model I've ever painted, probably even the ugliest model I've ever seen. Anyway, let's see how I ended up with this monstrosity in this video. Let's get started. Hey everybody, NFI Hammer here. I consider myself a beginner in the hobby. As you can tell by my quality of my miniature painting is uh, not very good. I have another channel uh, that I paint my Necrons on, but I thought I would start a channel dedicated to Underworlds because I'm very excited about this game. I'm hoping that I can trick or <laughs> convince some of my friends to uh, play with me as it seems like a much easier beginning point. So today I'm going to be doing the Skinnikin, um, the Khan Skia, which is this kind of gargoyle type uh, flesh eating monster. So I'm very excited about this one. I think it's definitely like the most impressive one out of the five of them. It, uh, it's a really unique model with a great pose and dynamic sort of um, look to it. So... Here are the stats on it. It's pretty um, interesting so that, you know, you can move over enemy fighters and then you roll a dice and you can see if you do extra damage and get a haunch counter. Um, and then when you get enough haunch counters, uh, it gets inspired. Um, so for the primer, I am just using a flat white primer. This one's a rust -Oleum brand that you get from your local hardware store. Uh, I used to prime only in black with my Necrons because it helps like the metallics stand out. But uh, I thought today I'll be trying something different and I'm going to try it and see how white works. So the main difference that I'm trying today is that I am using contrast paint, which I haven't really used uh, before properly. And I'm using Orc Flesh, which you can see kind of was a big mistake. Um, in the beginning, I had very little on my brush and it wasn't kind of creating any pooled, um, you know, depth to the texture um, that contrast paint sometimes does. So when I've loaded up my brush with some more paint, you can see here that it's kind of pooling into the recesses and creating like a really dark green color. And then in the raised areas, it's a lot thinner, so it's lighter green. Originally, I was trying to avoid the bone structure as well because I didn't want to paint it green. Um, but my brush control is not very good, which <laughs> you would think after painting for about 18 months that I'd be a bit better at it. Um, but as you can see, I'm not really. So I'm just kind of decided just to paint kind of like most of the miniature with this green color and then I'll come back later with base paints and go over the top. And I was going to paint the body as well like a different color and keep like the wings green and the body maybe like a lighter green kind of like the box art or um, maybe even a darker like blue color but I just I couldn't convince myself to do it and uh, I just left it as it is. So for the fur, I thought Phoenician purple might be a good color. Um, I use this on my, I have like a very small amount of Tyranid models and I thought this purple might um, kind of contrast really well with the green. And he's got these like fur tufts on his back. Sorry about the camera angle here. <laughs> I um, forgot I was recording. And I'm just trying to make sure I get into all the grooves. And he's also got these, like, I don't know, tufts of fur that are kind of, like, breaking out like a teenager, you know, when they're first growing in a beard and there's just, like, weird tufts everywhere. Um, and then he's also got this modesty patch of fur over his groin. Um, so I think Games Workshop didn't want to go, like, full Ken doll and put some fur down here as well, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, it's just trying to, you know, color it all in, but I didn't want to get any on where I've painted with the contrast paint. 
And then, as I mentioned before, the bones, I wanted to kind of leave a different color. So I've got this wraith bone, which is a really good bone color. I guess it's in the name. And I thought I'd try and go over all of the, um, you know, main bones holding the wings together with this just to kind of make it pop a little bit more and makes it a little bit more um, terrifying. I also then thought, oh, well, I've got this out. I can try and paint the teeth. And I was actually really happy with how the teeth came out because usually I managed to get paint everywhere. And then there's also some bones on the base that I thought I would do while I've got the paint out. I do really like how these models come with painted um, or decorated bases. I think that's a really nice touch. So yeah, this is a bad and black. Um, I've kind of watered it down a bit too much. So yeah, I've got to go over these things a few times. But I thought for like the claws and the tips of the bone wings, I would make it black. It, it doesn't really blend super well because, you know, you've got this white wraith bone straight into black. But I think like the claws on his feet and um, make sense. So for consistency, um, I went black here. And then Rhinox Hide is like my go-to color for everything, um, which I probably shouldn't. But anything brown, I'm like, yeah, let's do Rhinox Hide. Um, so there's this leather strap that's tied around, um, I don't know what you call it, like this pillar. And I was like, yeah, Rhinox Hide, it probably reads as a leather color, maybe. <laughs> um, so I don't have a huge selection of paints, especially brown ones. So I'm trying to make it do. And then for the dirt on the ground, got to paint some dirt for the dirt man. I am just putting some Rhinox Hide here in between like the stones and the bones just to kind of read muddy terrain. I'm sure there's probably much better colors to use for that. And then I noticed his ears, it was really good depth of like shading with the contrast paint, but um, it just kind of is too much green. So I've got this pink color that I never used before. And I thought, because he's kind of like a bat creature, I would try and paint in the ears and the nose as this kind of pink and make him like lean into the ugly, I guess, you know, and really like bright colors. And Luna, my oldest cat, um, has decided to check what's up and has come to interrupt my painting. After giving her pats, um, I was using this kind of red uh, paint um, to paint in the eyes. So the eyes actually, I think, looked really good with like the white dot. And if it was like a human model, I probably would have just left it as is. But because this is some sort of, you know, flesh eating um, can skier or how you pronounce it, I thought it would make more sense to give him, you know, evil red eyes that are kind of piercing and glowing. So I'm just trying to dob like the smallest little dot into the eye sockets. Um, and I didn't manage to screw it up very much. So I think it kind of looked all right in the end. It's a very subtle approach. And then I've got some Mechanicus Standard Grey, which is like a very dark grey, I guess. And I have way too much on my brush that my brush is super old and I need to throw it out. Um, so I just kind of keep coming back to this section to mop up any spare paint um, just to try and thin it out. It doesn't really matter too much on this section, luckily, because any extra like thickness and texture just looks like it's part of the stone pillar. And then there's also these like broken up cobblestones on the ground as well. So again, I'm just trying to make them gray just to kind of make the base a little bit more, you know, um, decorated, I guess. But you don't want it all like the same color and stuff like that. But I end up getting some paint on the skulls and stuff. So I'm going to have to come back later and touch them all up. And this is probably a step you can skip, but there's a little belt buckle. And I just thought, 
I might use my silver lead belcher paint and just um, paint that buckle that silver color just to give the model like a little bit of um, bling, I guess, and a little bit of like that reflective color, but you know, any sort of light gray color probably would work equally well, or you could go like a bronze um, color, but um, this is one that I use a lot on my Necrons. And I was getting really distracted by how ugly like the rim of the base was, and I think it was kind of making it really hard to, you know, get a sense of how the model was progressing while it was um, as ugly as it was. So I thought I'd just get some Abaddon Black out and um, go over the rim, just trying not to get too much on the actual base. And already it's looking a lot neater. And then I noticed the ears weren't showing like the ridges and stuff that they were before with the contrast paint because I just used a pink base paint. So I just thought I'd try and put some null oil and let the paint or let the shade pool into the cracks. And that way it'll kind of create those um, depth of shades in them. Now I was going to try some edge highlighting, which is definitely like one of my biggest weaknesses. So I've got a light um, white paint here and I'm trying to just get the cracks of the uh, um, pillar down here. It, it's looking very bright on camera, but as the paint dries, uh, it's a little bit um, translucent. And so it kind of does darken a little bit and is less kind of um, in your face. But I'm just trying to use the edge of the brush here and just kind of catch all the edges just to give that pillar a little bit of a three-dimensional effect, which seems, you know, superfluous because it is three-dimensional, but edge highlighting really helps with that. And then Bugman's Glow is like a flesh tone, but I refuse to use it like that. And so I was trying to use it as like an edge highlight for the leather straps, um, but it really isn't the right color and it looks very um, bright. So I might have to come back later and try and fix that up. And then this is a new color I've never used, which again is Katie and Flesh Tone, which is a flesh tone. But I'm like, no, to me, this is going to be a wood color. So this kind of you know, wood block that's kind of coming out of the middle of the stone, I thought I'm going to try and just um, use this to kind of help it read maybe a little bit more like wood. And then the purple fur is just very dark. So I've got this um, lighter purple color and I'm just trying to just pick out some of the feathers or fur or whatever it is this monster has and just kind of... Um, give it a little bit of a brighter purple effect. And the good thing is you don't have to be very precise. You can be a little bit messy, um, but it's just about creating some different colors. And then in that same tone, the Chala Lilac is a very bright purple color, or, you know. Um, so just by doing even less and just catching the very edges um, kind of creates this like feathering technique of, um, you know, the fur, so it really does look, um, you know, multiple different shades. It's not just this one block of color. And then I'm just going over with the pink on the edges of the ear because the null oil shade did kind of darken it quite a lot that um, now I can just go over the edges and it kind of just helps um, bring back the brightness. And for the talons and the nails, uh, it's very black. And so I'm using this um, Reaper gray color. And I'm just trying to catch like one edge of each of these. And as it dries, it kind of dries even darker. And it's a very subtle effect. Um, but it does help bring a bit of um, dynamicness to the, I think I just invented that word, um, to the talons. And then I did notice that the edge highlighting of the leather and the wood was just a bit too bright. So I'm using Agrax Earth Shade here, which is a brown shade, and I'm just trying to darken them up a little bit or just kind of like blending them together so that it looks like one cohesive color thing. Um, and then also the bones 
um, I find that adding some Agrax Earthshade over the Wraith Bone really makes it look like weathered bone. And this is Mossy Texture um, from AK that I've never used before. And I'm just dabbing on some PVA glue here. And I was really excited to try this and I thought this one would kind of make sense. However, I think it's probably too much green um, in the one model. But you just kind of sprinkle it on. And then I noticed some got on the leather strap, which doesn't really make sense. I wanted it just to stay on the, you know, um, pillar and the ground. And yeah, just dab off any extra stuff. And this is what the finished product is. So it kind of is giving incredible Hulk vibes, you know, with the green and purple and a little bit radioactive. Um, it's potentially one of my ugliest models I think I've ever painted. But I don't know, there's something about it that I kind of just enjoy the kitschiness and the weirdness of it that, I don't know, I, I think is all right. What are your thoughts? Is this the ugliest model you've ever seen? Um, how did your Skinnerkin turn out? Particularly the Kant skier. Um, you know, I'd love to know what your thoughts are in the comments below. If you've liked this video um, and you want to see more of my Underworlds painting, uh, feel free to follow and like and subscribe. It really helps me out and it helps the YouTube algorithm gods recommend the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.